good morning students in the previous class do we have completed the topic transportation in living beings today we will start the next topic which is excretion in the chapter life process so let us try to understand what do we mean by the word excretion so we may define excretion in simpler forms that removal of harmful metabolic products from the body to outside the environment is known as excretion we may have discussed that what do we mean by the word metabolism which means the sum total of all biochemical reactions occurring within any living being is known as metabolism so for example if we may consider any life form we may observe or we may go through that different types of biochemical reactions may be occurring within the particular living being at any time so during that particular process certain types of waste products or harmful products are being formed within the body and their removal is very much essential from the body from time to time for example we may consider our home just like in our kitchen while cooking food different types of waste products are formed made at the peels of vegetables peels of fruits leftover food items etc these are to be removed or disposed from a ki kitchen to outside at proper disposal place otherwise it may create foul smell and may cause adverse impact within the environment of our kitchen just like do we may consider some more examples that whenever we carry out any suppose paper project works we may observe that bits of paper tapes or any other waste products are being formed and their removal is very much essential so just like if we consider any living being during the process of metabolism different types of harmful metabolic products are formed and their removal is very much essential from the body to outside the environment for the easier and proper sustenance of the individual organism within the universe now let us try to understand how do the unicellular life forms for example amoeba it fulfills the process of excretion as we know amoeba is made up of a single cell its cell is in direct contact to the environment so for example whenever the concentration of carbon dioxide increases within the cell much more as compared to the outside environment is just readily diffuses it to the outside environment through the process of diffusion just like whenever it has to release the waste products it creates the vacuole and releases it through the membrane to the outside environment so we may observe in the case of unicellular organisms the living beings they fulfills the role of excretion just by we may say through their general body surfaces whereas in the case of multicellular living beings for example we humans there is necessity of certain type of system which will help to fulfill the process of excretion if we may consider there are certain types of waste products formed within our body which are released to the outside environment for example the carbon dioxide which is a waste product formed during the process of respiration is released through our lungs via the nostrils just like the fecal matter which is stored within the rectum during the process of digestion is also eliminated through the anus to the environment and just like one more important which is nitrogenous compound is formed within our body is to be also released to outside the environment so if we consider most importantly we may say that the removal of nitrogenous waste product 
from the individual organism to outside the environment is known as excretion what do we mean by the nitrogenous compounds let us we know that different types of nutrients do we consume during the process of nutrition out of which protein plays a vital role and during the metabolism of protein certain types of nitrogenous compounds are formed and the removal of these nitrogenous compounds are very much essential through our body otherwise they may create toxicity with our within our body and may create adverse impact upon the other physiological activities of the individual life form so before discussing the human excretory system let us try to understand what are the different types of nitrogenous waste products formed within the animal species depending upon their habitat and groups so there are certain animals which releases their nitrogenous waste product in the form of ammonia as ammonia is highly toxic its removal also requires a large amount of water so the mode of excretion in which ammonia is released is known as ammonotelism whereas the group of animals falling under the category are called as ammonotelic animals for example tailwist fishes and tadpoles of amphibians soft bodied aquatic invertebrates crocodiles etc they releases their nitrogenous waste product in the form of ammonia whereas there are certain group of animals which release their nitrogenous waste products in the form of uric acid so the mode of excretion is known as uricotelism whereas the animals falling under the category are called as uricotelic animals for example insects birds land reptiles etc and as uric acid is less toxic as compared to ammonia its removal also requires very less amount of water for its we can say elimination from the body whereas the third group of animals which shows that the nitrogenous waste product is formed in the form of urea and the mode of excretion is known as ureotelism whereas the animals falling under the category are called as ureotelic animals for example we all mammals adult amphibians cartilaginous fishes etc and as it is less toxic as compared to ammonia its removal also requires amount of water but but less as compared to the ammonia so we have discussed that the urea which is the nitrogenous waste product which is formed within our body is produced within our liver through a special cycle which is called as urea cycle in which the urea is formed within the liver from the liver the blood carries the urea dissolved within the blood and it sends to the both kidneys which are the major excretory organ in which they are having certain microscopic structures called nephrons which are the structural and functional unit of the kidneys which helps to filter out the urea from the blood thus forming urine the blood which is brought by the liver with the help of the renal artery is sent to the both kidneys where the blood is filtered and the urea is removed away and the blood is again sent back via the renal vein so let us now we'll try to understand about the excretory system of human beings so the human excretory system it consists of a pair of kidneys and their blood supply 
through renal artery and renal vein a pair of ureters from each kidney a urinary bladder and a urethra our kidney is bean shaped reddish brown in color measuring about 10 cm in length 5 cm in breadth and 3 cm in thickness and weighing around about 125 to 170 grams in an adult person if we go for their location the kidneys they are located one on each side of the vertebral column at the level of the 12th thoracic and first and second lumbar vertebrae the kidneys they are attached to the dorsal body wall and covered by the peritoneum on the ventral side our right kidney is somehow at a lower position as compared to the left kidney due to the reason which is that the presence of liver within our right side which suppresses the right kidney to its at lower level so the urine formed within our kidneys they are brought by the ureters to the urinary bladder where it is stored and from time to time it is released through the urethra so now let us try to understand in brief about the longitudinal section of kidney if we go through the longitudinal section of kidney we may observe it is covered by a layer of connective tissue called as renal capsule and surrounding the renal capsule we may observe it is having a layer of fat forming the adipose capsule which protects the kidney from the mechanical shock or injury whereas the outermost covering is a fibrous membrane called renal fascia this renal fascia it helps to anchor the kidney to the abdominal wall now if we go just below the renal capsule is a dark region of the kidney tissue called as cortex whereas the inner lighter region of kidney which is called as medulla so our each kidney is made up of these nephrons which are the structural and functional unit each kidney they are having more than a millions of nephrons in which the blood is filtered and the urea is removed away other with certain other metabolic waste products thus forming the urine so in the next class we'll discuss about the structure of nephron and the process of the formation of urine till so far here thank you have a nice day